Hello and welcome back to the channel guys. Now today I just wanted to make a very quick video for new players to Tarkov. Now let's see if you've just picked up Tarkov, you want to get straight into a raid, but you're pretty confused on how the medication system works within Tarkov. Now I've taught a few people very, you know, very recently and a lot of them do get confused as to what medical items are the best to use and what does what. So I thought I'd do a very basic guide on the basic medications in the game and what they do. I'm not gonna go over all the stimulants and all the different types of painkillers in this video. I'm literally just gonna give a very brief overview on what medication does what, so you can get an idea, so you can jump straight into your raid. Now, we're gonna start off with the most basic of healing items, known as the cheese block, but the proper name for it is the AI2 medkit. This literally has 100 durability. Now, all this item is gonna do is restore HP. It's not gonna stop any bleeds or anything like that. It's purely gonna give you HP back. Now let's say you got shot down to 50 out of 85 in your forex, you use this, it's literally just going to heal you back up to full HP. That's literally all it's going to do. Like I said, if you've got bleed, this isn't the item to use. But if you do have a bleed, there are two types of bleeds. I'll bring the icons up screen right now. You have light bleed and you have a heavy bleed. If you have a light bleed, you're going to be wanting to use an item, either the standard bandage or the army bandage. The only difference between these two is one has one use, one has two uses. If you have a heavy bleed, you're going to want to use either an S March, a cat, or a hemostat. Now the hemostat is the best item out of all of these. It has three uses and it only uses three seconds to use. The cat is basically a one use hemostat, three seconds to use, stops a heavy bleed. And the S March is the worst one. It takes five seconds to use, only one use, but it still will stop a heavy bleed. Now there are other items that can do this. We have the Salawa, the Car Medkit, the AFAC, and the IFAC. Now these items are basically an AI2 mixed with a bandage and a heavy bandage, if that makes sense. So if you, if I, I'll show you the item right now for a Salawa, for example, it will restore HP just like an AI2 does, but it can stop light bleeds and it can stop heavy bleeds. Normally you wouldn't use this item to stop heavy bleeds because it uses a lot of the durability of the item. But a Salawa, for example, is going to use 175 durability out of 400 just to stop the bleed. That's not including the HP you then have to heal up after. So normally what you will do is this item will replace bandage and AI2 together. So if you was to use a Salawa, you wouldn't bother taking a normal bandage. You wouldn't bother taking an AI2. You would just take a Salawa. This is exactly the same with the Car Med Kit, the AFAC and the IFAC. Any differences here is mainly durability. But I will say the Salawa is normally the best one out of all of these. It's the only one that can heal you from 1 HP to 85 HP in your Forex in one heal. It, uh, one animation, should I say, sorry. Uh, an AFAC and an IFAC and a Card Med Kit, I don't believe will. Um, so the Salawa is normally the go-to item to use if you want to take this medication in. But of course, you're still going to want to take a Heavy Bleed item alongside this. Uh, I would recommend if you can get your hands on hemostats, definitely make use of them because they are the best one. If you can't, an S March is very cheap from therapist. You can just pick one up and run one each raid. Now, moving on, if you was to get something like a fracture, I'll bring the icon up screen right now, what a fracture looks like. If you to get a fracture, simply it's just use a splint. Now you've got the one use splint or the five use splint. That's the only difference between these two. If you can get your hands on an alu splint, normally people run this in their container. If you've got a gamma container you've got a lot more room so it's a bit easier but if you've only got the standard alpha it might be a bit awkward to fit this in but either way there's not really a difference between these two splints it's just one's a one use one's a five use so i can say about that now when we go on to blacked out limbs so if you lose all your hp in a certain limb it can't be the forex or the head because if you lose all your hp in that you die or if it bleeds out you can't cms or survive 12 it but you can survive 12 or CMS your right arm, your stomach, your left, and then your right or left leg. Now, what this will do is it will restore your HP back. It'll give it one HP, but you'll lose some of the max HP, if that makes sense. So you've got a 60 out of 60 left arm. Let's say get all the HP gets lost in it. So it's now zero out of 60, it's blacked out. If you was to use a survive 12, it'll be, give it one HP, but the max durability of it will go down to like 40, for example. So you'll have one out of 40 left arm if you was to heal up. Your max HP on your left arm now for the rest of the raid will be 40, if that makes sense. Now, the only difference between the Survive 12 and the CMS is, well, first of all, there's more uses on the Survive 12, but it is one slot bigger. The Survive 12 will restore more max durability on your limb, but it does take slightly longer. That is the only differences between these two. If you can run a Survive 12, it's better than the CMS, but if you haven't got room to run 
a survive 12 a cms is definitely better again most people are going to be using this inside of their container if you've got a alpha of course you can't run survive 12 sadly but cms is it's still fine it's still absolutely acceptable now, the last item i want to talk about is a grizzly now i've left this till last you don't see these that often but it's basically an all-in-one the only thing this can't do is restore blacked out limbs this item has 1800 durability it is a two by two item but it can stop light bleeds it can stop heavy bleeds it can heal you and it can remove a fracture it is absolutely fantastic if you've got one of these lying around and you don't want to sell it and you just want to use it honestly just go for it this item is really really nice to have on you some people even just put this in their container so they have loads of healing items in their container all in one it's fantastic i think this item is one of the best healing items in the game but it is a two by two and is about 40k on the flea market right now if you want to get a full durability one so it is quite expensive now i said i wasn't really going to talk about painkillers but i want to very briefly talk about just one so i can give you an idea of how they all work now this is some people say this is the best painkiller in the game this is golden star basically there's two types of painkillers there's ones you apply through a stim and ones you apply through just taking some sort of medication whether it be vaseline whether it be ibuprofen something like that so these are basically all exactly the same they will all give you a painkiller effect which will allow you to run on blacked out limbs uh, your character won't moan if his character if you're in pain if you're in pain you won't be like panting and whatnot so it kind of reduces all those effects but like i said the only difference is how long these painkillers last that is literally it and how fast they are to apply there's no difference so just check out the painkillers i could go for all of them but like i said there's very minimal difference but golden stars rated is one of the best um so if you really want to get the best one just go for gold star but other than that i hope this video did help you guys i've tried to explain everything as quick as possible and as simple as possible i just wanted to quickly add this at the end of the video uh this is going to be the first part of a two-part series the second part of this series is going to be me talking about how to get rid of the negative debuffs in the game this part was purely just to explain all the medication items all the basic ones but in the next video i'm going to be explaining how to get rid of all the debuffs the character's gonna get you know the pain tremors all stuff like that so if you guys are interested and what kind of debuffs there are in the game i'll explain how to sort them then watch the second part i'm gonna be releasing that within two days so i hope you guys do look forward to that but thanks again for watching i'll see you guys in the next one peace